The Nook is an incredibly cheap and cozy solo base with four bunkers that are capable of protecting your loot against up to 47 rockets in an offline raid. That means raiders will have to spend 66,000 sulfur to raid a base that's smaller than a 2x2. It can be built as a standalone base with a lower raid cost that fits absolutely anywhere and stays super low key. Or it can be easily expanded into an offline raid tank with a defendable compound that has endless peaks and respawns. So if you're sick of farming and you just want a base that won't be empty the next day when you wake up, the Nook is for for you. This first build cost is for the version without a compound. As you can see, anybody can afford this. And fully expanded with a compound and 24 rockets worth of external bunkers, it's still super affordable. So, let's get into the tour. We'll start off our tour of the Nook by taking a look at these bunkered external TCs. We have three of these and they cost eight rockets each to raid, kicking us off with 24 rockets of offline raid protection before we even get into the base. The upkeep is super cheap on these and we have a couple of large boxes in each of them. So when you go offline, you can put some of your loot in each of them. If your main TC gets raided, you'll have to disconnect each of your externals. To do that, we'll build a simple twig build out and place a roof. We'll disconnect the square frame above. You can replace your main TC and then simply replace place the floor frame here. If we head into one of our three gatehouses, you can see that we start off with a single door airlock to make sure you don't get deep done. They also double as bedrooms, so you'll have three bedrooms in your compound. They have really great Patrico peaks that overlook the entire compound with no blind spots. And there's a little bit of hidden storage above the top of them using the frontier barrels. Opening up the double door actually sections off each part of the compound as well, making it really difficult for raiders to make their way around it. You can see the use of furnace walls here that prevent raiders from immediately gaining access to the compound, but allow your turrets to see outside using the chain link. It also increases the number of HV rockets that it takes to destroy them. Our main entrance to the base is right here, but I actually want to take you to the third side, which I call the backyard. Before we go in, you'll also notice that some of these are funneled shotgun trap sections. The backyard is a little different from the other two sides, because instead of a furnace wall, I've left open a bunch of space for utility items like an oil refinery. The reason for this is because in order to open our bunker, we need to place a square foundation right here. I'm not going to open the bunker just yet. Let's head around to the front door and take a tour of the inside first. We head directly into a single door airlock with a window out into the compound for visibility. This again will ensure that you don't get deep done even in the early game. Immediately off to our left, we have a 10 box loot room. If you don't have the Frontier Barrel DLC, you can just use large boxes here. Then we have our crafting station with our tier 3 workbench. Next to that, we have a windowed off large battery room. This will power all of the turrets throughout the base, as well as any electric furnaces. And speaking of electric furnaces, we have six of them right here. And of course, we can't forget the U2's bobblehead. This triangle on the floor is actually the entrance to our bunker. We'll open that up after we take a look at the bedroom upstairs. Hopping on top of our workbench, we get to a bedroom up here where you can see a couple window frames that allow us to refill the turrets on the roof. There's also another frontier barrel above the single door where we can put our kits. And look at this cute little guy. We can head out the single door airlock now onto our roof. The roof is covered by two turrets that are covered by chain link, making them a little more expensive to shoot out with HVs. We also have a helipad here, which is super easy to land a mini on. And of course, we have a couple green renewable sources of energy between a wind turbine and a few solar panels. I'm sure at this point you're like dust, I just want to see inside the bunker. All right, all right. We'll place down a roof tile here on the foundation that will cause a severe lapse in stability opening up our bunker. When we head back inside our base, we'll see that our bunker is now open. There's still a garage door to go through to get into it though, which just makes it a little more safe. You can see there's ample storage in the bunker and we can pop open our TC compartment just to reveal how cheap that TC upkeep really is. I hope those numbers make you like the video and subscribe to my channel. Also, please make sure that you put a towel or a bag inside of the bunker as well, just in case anything funky happens. To seal up our bunker, we can be inside of it or outside, and we'll just place a triangle floor tile. Might be tempted to upgrade this to armor, but it doesn't actually change the raid cost, and it's a hell of a lot harder to soft side in case something goes really funky. And that is the Nook, the cozy offline tank built for solos just like you. 
to celebrate 100,000 subscribers, I'm doing a new merch drop, but there's a huge twist. Anybody who purchases any of my merch will automatically be entered to win over $1,000 in PC gaming prizes. I'm giving away an RTX 3060, two Logitech G Pro Super Lights, two glorious GMMK2 mechanical keyboards, and two crucial T500 SSDs. For every $5 that you spend on the store, you'll automatically get one entry. That means if you buy a t-shirt, that's six entries to win. A sweatshirt is 10. There's no limit to how many entries you can have. So if you want to support me as a creator, get some sick merch, and potentially win one of the seven prizes, make sure you check out the first link in the description and the pinned comment. Thank you again for 100k, and let's get back to the video. Our starter base is super simple and cheap. We'll start off with three triangles just like this. We can enclose our TC over on this side and then wall in the rest of the perimeter. On the front, we'll add a door frame, but make sure to keep it wood because we'll machete it out later. After that, we can expand with an airlock and again, keep the ceiling and the other door frame in wood. We'll place down a couple of single doors to create an airlock. For deployables on the inside, we can place a large box against this wall a tier one workbench here. A furnace goes next to the TC. And then we can squeeze the last large box next to the first. If you do the placement well, you can actually fit a campfire in front of the T1 workbench as well. I'm putting my bag in the airlock, but you can always feel free to adjust the interior layout of this if it suits you better. And you've completed the super easy starter base that has enough storage and utility to get you going. Next, we're going to build out the bunkers. So come to the right side of your airlock here and place a triangle with a square off of it. We're then going to build out 11 triangles. At the end, we'll place a square here. If you've done it right, it should look just like this. We can go ahead and delete all the twig except the last square. And then build back to the base using squares. When we get to the end, we'll place a triangle, making sure to look right. You should see this stone texture on the bottom left side if you've done it right. And if that stone texture is there, you can upgrade it to armored or whatever the best grade is that you have at the time. We'll then place down another square and build out nine triangles this time. Place the square at the end and delete the rest of the twig. We'll build back with squares, making sure to deliberately attach the square to the square and not the triangle. And then we'll repeat the process by building out another nine triangles and ending it with a square. We'll delete all of the twig and then build back with squares, again making sure to attach to the square. At the end here, we can place two half walls and then standing on this twig, we can place a triangle here. If you've done it all correctly, this twig triangle should have 22% stability. And if it does, go ahead and upgrade everything. All of these are accessible later, so if you don't have HQM right now, it's no big deal. To seal that triangle off, we'll place a triangle here and then looking left, we can place another triangle, making sure that the stone texture is in the bottom left. If you see it there, go ahead and place a wall and upgrade it. That will ensure it's not attached to the pixel gap, giving the bunker additional stability, but rather it's attached to the main base. Our next step is to head into the airlock and use a machete to chop out the ceiling. You could also use bone knives or any other melee tool. Stepping outside our front door, we'll use a triangle floor frame and place it from this side. Make sure the stability is 92% and then you can upgrade it to any grade. We should then be able to place the floor tile here off of our bunker and it should be 10% stable. Before we upgrade it, we'll go ahead and test by placing a twig roof right here and you can see that it does in fact break. With that, we can get rid of the twig and upgrade the ceiling to the bunker. Congratulations, the hardest part of the build is done. By this point in your wipe, you're probably looking for a little bit more space. So we'll start by placing triangles on every side of the base, except for where the bunker is, because that just is the honeycomb. As you can see, it'll look like this from the top, and everything is nice and symmetrical. We can go ahead and start honeycombing each of the sides, just making sure that our airlock side stays open with a wall for now, so we still have a way into the base. We'll close this up once we have a second floor on. All of the rest of the sides are totally standard honeycomb, though. And it should look just like this when you're done. We'll come to the opposite side of our bunker entrance and place down a single door airlock with a window frame as well. After that, we'll just wall in every other side of the base. When you get to the bunker side, if you notice the walls are red, just kind of jiggle it around and look down. Once all the walls are up, we'll start placing ceiling tiles on everything. The only place that we'll leave open in the ceiling is right here because this will be our jump up to the next floor. 
We can seal this section off by placing a double door frame here and then either a double door or a garage door, whatever you have. We'll then seal up our single door airlock by putting on a window or window bars if you don't have it yet and a couple of doors. We need a way to get up to that airlock though. So just using wood, we can build a little ramp. Once you've got the second floor fully sealed off and an airlock with a way up to it, we can seal off the honeycomb to our original starter entrance. And then from the outside, we'll open up our bunker quick using this foundation and a piece of twig. Just like that, you can see that it popped open and we're ready to start living out of our base using the front entrance. We can come to the inside of the base and pick up our doors and again use machetes or other melee tools to start chopping out these wooden walls. This shouldn't take you long at all. We can put down a double door frame here and then pick up our bag and move a furnace into the corner as a jump up. Make sure to replace your bag down here so you have one in the core. At this point, we can go ahead and start building out the second floor. I'll start by placing a half height shelf over here so we can place down six electric furnaces. If you don't have electric furnaces yet though, you can place three normal furnaces in this corner as well and just pick them up whenever you get the electric ones. After that, we can move on to our main loot room that has some of our mass storage. Definitely don't keep your best loot up here because it's not the most secure, but this is a great replacement for depot boxes, components, prim kits, or anything else that doesn't need to be behind the bunker for protection. The best way that I've found to use a three triangle loot room like this is by using the frontier barrels because you can fit 10 of them in here and they're equivalent to a large box. However, you can just use six large boxes and some small boxes instead. Also, the shelf can be wood if you wanna save some materials or stone, it doesn't really matter. Just keep in mind, Triangles are splashable from the outside of the base, so the wood might be a little fragile. And now that we've placed down all of our boxes in the mass storage room, we'll finish up our last room here by placing a large battery in this triangle. After that, we'll place a window frame on it and double door frames on every other socket here. Make sure to put down garage doors when you get them, but double doors work in the early game. And since I always get comments about this, this garage door is my Twitch drop. It is unfortunately no longer available, but it was claimed by over a quarter million people. So thank you guys so much if you got my Twitch drop and I hope you guys are enjoying it. Just make sure at this point you keep this garage door or double door closed all the time because there's no airlock or anything yet. Next, I'm going to show you the final grades for everything, starting off with the core of the base. We'll also shift around the interior layout and get it to its final state. If we drop down to the bunker, we can see that our TC is on the side where the single door is. And this really isn't something that we want long term, because otherwise you'd be able to come through the two single doors and then raid through the ceiling. We'll pick up all of our starter deployables and then either use handmade shells with an Yoka or fire arrows with a bow to destroy our original TC. We placed it on this side originally, so it couldn't be seen from our starter airlock, but to make our final raid cost a bit stronger, we'll move it onto the other side. You can see that's super quick to take it out, and then we can replace it on the other side. We'll place it on this triangle opposite of where it originally was, and then we can upgrade all three of these exterior triangles. The middle triangle here can be any grade and it doesn't affect raid cost. It's easiest to upgrade the entire TC compartment to armored right now. And then we can place a window frame over top of it. This can be either stone or sheet metal. When we build this half height shelf next to it, we can upgrade them to sheet metal and upgrade the window frame as well to buff the raid cost a little bit and make it a lot more difficult to get to the loot in the TC. At this point, it's also easiest to grab these walls and upgrade them to armored. We can also do the ceiling tiles of the core here and then begin placing our boxes. You can do whatever box layout you prefer. I'm just doing four large boxes in the example, but I've also put small boxes in the tour. We'll then put a window over our TC with a horizontal window embrasure, which really helps to stop splash damage. We can put a garage door over this loot room as well, so when the bunker is open, the raid cost is still decent through the door path. The last part to upgrade in our bunker is upgrading these interior walls to sheet metal. Now that our bunkered core has been upgraded, we can basically upgrade most of the base to sheet metal. If we take a look at the airlock here, you can see it's mostly stone, but we now have an armored door that's also upgraded to sheet metal. Other than that, everything externally is sheet metal. If 
we head inside the base, you'll see that things like half height shelves, double door frames, and window frames have been left stone because those don't affect the raid cost. Make sure to get the tops of your honeycomb as well in places like the battery compartment because those would affect the raid cost from certain angles. And that is how we upgrade basically everything. This base is so small and cheap that upgrading most of it to sheet metal really isn't a big cost. Now it's time to build our bedroom and roof. So we'll head in our front airlock and then we'll seal up our battery with a window and then seal up our bunker with something cheap like stone just so that nobody goes deep. Opening up our roof entrance, we can place down our tier two or tier three workbench, whichever we have at the time. Then we'll place down a small box under it and a frontier barrel in front of it. Once we've got that down, we can use our workbench as a jump up onto the roof. We'll start off by building a full wall off of the pixel gap section right here. And then using twig, we'll make a build up on the outside so then we can get a half height shelf coming off of that wall. At this point, delete all of the twig and then continue in closing the bedroom in with a wall here and a couple of window frames. When it looks like this, we'll put a ceiling on all of it. We can put a single door frame down right here, but we'll hold off on the second one just for now. Place a single door facing outward and then a couple of windows here. It's way easier to place this bed if this single door frame isn't on yet, so I like to place the bed first and then put the additional airlock on. We'll fill in these side tiles right here and upgrade them to sheet metal so they're not super easily soft sidable. We'll then make little turret pods here with some half walls and ceilings. Put a double door frame on the front, which will hold our chain link to help protect it from additional HV rockets. Then we'll fill in this final gap right here and place a couple of low walls just for a little extra cover. Heading up on top of the bedroom, we can also place some additional low walls here to cover our solar panels. These are super useful in the early game before you get a wind turbine. But we can also build a wind turbine tower just using some double door frames. To make it super easy to get up and down from our wind turbine, we can also just place cargo nets. Now this part is how we're going to take our base from 23 rockets to 47 rockets. We'll make three external TC bunkers with gatehouse bedroom combinations off of each of these three sides. Just keep in mind the gatehouse will be slightly different on the side that we have the square here to open our bunker. So I'm just going to place a piece of twig there for now so we remember. We'll start by building five squares off of each of these sides of the bases. It should look just like this. We'll then come back with triangle half moons and end with a square with a couple triangles off of it. Upgrade what you see shown. And at this point, you can delete the rest of the twig buildup. This will be our gatehouse and bedroom combination. To build the external, we'll build a triangle with three squares off of it and then end in three triangles. Upgrade the two side ones, but leave the middle one twig because we'll be deleting it. Get rid of the twig buildup and then enclose your TC. We can put a single door frame on it now so it's easy to get up in the early game without having to build the bunker right away. We'll also build a shelf on the other side to hold a couple large boxes. I'm using Crow's method where you place a couple of twig triangles on either side to make it easy to line up. Just jiggle back and forth with the square foundation until you have a corner that's touching and one that's not. You should see between 77 and 79% if it's done properly. Then build out with three triangles, delete the twig, and go back with a square and two triangles. After we delete the twig, we can upgrade this triangle to armored. There's a small gap at the top, but the frame will perfectly cover that. So if we open it with some twig and place the square frame here, it'll completely eliminate that gap. And it's needed anyway to reconnect to the gatehouse. Crow has a really great video completely outlining how to build this bunker in depth with a foolproof method. So make sure you go to his channel and check out that video. I'll put a link to it in the description if I remember. Whenever you've got the materials, feel free to upgrade every part of this to metal, including the single door frame on the inside that creates a conditional model that might seal any small gap you have on that side. And we can finish it off by placing a couple large boxes in there for bunkered storage. At this point, we can go and build our gatehouse by starting off with a single door airlock with a window on it. 
the wall in these two sides, and then we can begin connecting our external to the gatehouse so it doesn't decay. If you want to make sure that that build privilege extends all the way to your base, make sure that you upgrade these to sheet metal so they can't just break stone and break the connection. At this point, we can add the Patrico Peaks to our gatehouse by using two half walls and two ceiling tiles, and then replacing the bottom with a low wall. We'll place a window frame over all of this, and we've got some nasty Patrico Peaks with an enclosed top section that we can actually put some additional frontier barrels in. Place a ceiling above you, and then place a double door frame here. You can use a single door frame too if you want to save a bit of cost, and we'll finish filling out the deployables. Placing a campfire in front of this bed right here makes it super easy to just crouch straight in without having to jump or jump crouch or do anything like that. And as you can see, we've got some awesome Patrico peaks here with some hidden storage and bedrooms. If you want, you can also upgrade these peaks to metal right here so they're not super easily soft sidable from the outside. If you've got those frontier barrels in there, you can put a window over top of them overnight. And as four rockets of additional storage, I haven't even factored into the raid cost. We're about to add the furnace walls, but just remember where this twig square is to keep that there because that'll be slightly different. On the the remaining sides will add a half height wall here with a double door frame on top and then replace the half wall with a low wall. We can remove the foundation because it's not required and we'll repeat the same thing on each side of each gatehouse. We'll then add a half walls to the top of the gatehouses to create a little turret pod. The double door frames will hold chain link that'll prevent people from HV rocketing it out if the compound has been breached. Like we talked about where the square has to go, we just won't be able to place these two things, which is why we keep the square there to remind us that just that one little section is slightly different. It's super easy to place our compound walls, we'll just stand where each furnace will go and alt look until it's about halfway. It's not super precise, so I wouldn't really worry about messing it up. And placing the furnace wall itself is just as easy. We'll stand right here and then take our furnace out and just lift it up. Basically anywhere that you're able to place it, it'll act as a furnace wall. We can then fill in the chain link on these missing spots. Just remember we can't place a furnace on the last side. However, we can use the backyard for an entirely different function. We'll put down an oil refinery, some mixing tables, and any old workbenches like our tier one and tier two, along with any charcoal furnaces or anything else that you need out here. So it's not wasted space. It's just used for something different. Just remember whatever you place can't block the square, but you don't need the square there all the time. So if you need to temporarily put down deployables, that's totally fine. Now coming over to the two remaining sections here, we can build out little funnel sections just like this. We'll add some shotgun traps in here to make it nearly impossible for raiders to move around the compound. It also makes it a little harder for grubs who are trying to get your furnaces or oil refinery because they can't really easily rotate around the compound without twigging their way all over it, which draws a lot of attention. And as we're wrapping up the final details of putting barricades on the gatehouse, I just want to say thank you guys so much for always watching the videos, subscribing, dropping likes and comments, and joining the Discord. It's always awesome to talk to you guys, and I hope you get a ton of value out of this video. I will see you in the next one.